the Nutcracker. Chapter One, Christmas Eve. A soft, fluffy layer of snow covered. Clara's house on Christmas Eve. Inside, a party was in full swing, but one very special guest hadn't arrived. Clara watched for him at the window. Suddenly, there was a loud knock on the door. He's here! She cried, dancing over and flinging open the door. It was Clara's godfather. She gave him a big hug. What a warm welcome on such a chilly night! He said. With a chuckle, "Merry Christmas!" Clara loved her godfather's visit. Something magical always happened when he was around. I have a very special present for you this year," he told Clara, as he placed a package. Under the tree, Chapter Two, the mystery present. That night, Clara couldn't sleep. She lay in bed, thinking about her present. It can't hurt if I just have a little pick, she thought. Finally, Clara tiptoed downstairs. She soon found the present tied up with a big red bow. On the ribbon, there was a tag with a message: "Merry Christmas, Clara. I hope this protects you." With love from your godfather X. I wondered what godfather means," thought Clara. Slowly, Clara untied the bow and folded back a corner of the paper. Inside. She found a wooden nutcracker doll, dressed like a soldier. Just then, the clock struck midnight. Clara gave an enormous yawn. In a few minutes, she was fast asleep under the tree. Chapter Three: The Magic Begins. Clara woke up with a start, feeling very confused. She couldn't remember where she was, and her door had vanished. She looked around and saw she was under the Christmas tree, and it seemed. To be growing, what's happening? But the tree wasn't growing; she was shrinking. Soon, she was as small as a mouse. Out of the corner of her eye, Clara thought. She saw something leaping around. Frightened, she darted behind a present, and heard the three rustle behind her. Clara spun around. 
Don't be afraid, Clara. I won't hurt you," said a friendly voice. Clara was astonished. But you look like her doll had come to life. I am the Nutcracker Prince," he said, with a bow. And I'm here to protect you. The kitchen mice are plotting to kidnap you. The prince put out a whistle and gave a shrill blow. At once, the lid of the toy box flew open, and a long line of toy soldiers marched out. Standing in rows, they saluted the prince. Attention! He cried, "Clara needs our help. Prepare yourselves for battle, men! Wheel out the cannons!" Mice began to appear in the shadows. Slowly, they crept closer. Clara. Hid behind the prince. Steady, men! Steady! He shouted. Wait for the signal, and fire! <laughs> Huge lumps of cheese flew from the cannons and struck down several mice. Some lumps landed in the corners, and the other mice scampered after them. Excellent work, man! Roared the prince, as the last mouse vanished. But the fight wasn't over yet. Bravo! Said an evil voice from the shadows, a mouse wearing a crown and an eye patched appeared. <coughs> That's the Mouse King, the prince whispered to Clara. Is trees the best you can do? Jeered the king. It will take more than that to. Beat me now! Hand over the girl. I'd rather die," said the prince. "That can be arranged," the mouse king sneered. Soon, the prince and the mouse king were locked in battle. Their swords. Clunged as they danced around the room. <coughs> I'll make cream cheese out of you. Take it, you rascally rodent. Then, disaster struck. The prince tripped on a lump of cheese and spilled on the floor. Seizing his chance, the Mouse King put his sword to the prince's neck. Well, 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 I'm going to enjoy this," he said, laughingly. As the Mouse King put back his sword, Clara whipped off her shoe. And threw it as hard as she could at his head. He fell in a heap on the floor, knocked out cold. <coughs> Chapter Four: Sleigh bells ringing. Clara rushed over the prince. "Are you all right?" she cried. "Yes." 
Thanks to you, he said. We must celebrate, he added as Clara helped him up. I know just the place. The prince led Clara to a golden sleigh behind the Christmas tree and helped her aboard. Off we go, boys! The prince called to his four reindeer. As they gathered speed. The sleigh started to rise up into the air. They rode out through an open window and into the night. After some time, they came to a forest covered with crisp white snow. We are nearly at our first stop," the prince announced. "Hold on, we are going down." The snow crunched under the reindeer's feet as they landed. Just then, a beautiful lady dressed in sparkling white appeared among the trees. Clara, I'd like you to meet my friend, the Ice Queen," said the prince. "What a lovely surprise!" The queen led them into her icy palace, which glistened in the moonlight. Inside, icicle. Chandeliers hand from every shilling. You've arrived in time for the dances," said the queen, as they walked into a grand ballroom. A piano began to play, and eight ballerinas dressed in silver and white toured into the middle of the room. They twinkled like snowflakes as they spun around. I will always remember this," whispered Clara to the prince, as the music came to an end. After a game of catch with the palace poodle, it was time to leave. Do we really have to go? Signed Clara. Yes, we really do," said the prince. "There's someone else I want you to meet, and we don't have much time. Goodbye." Chapter Five: The Lands of Sweets. Clara. Gasp! When they reached their next stop, the trees were bursting with marshmallows blossoms, and lollipop flowers sprouted from the ground. Then Clara saw that the mountains were topped with melted chocolate, and. Milkshake rivers flowed down them. Where are we? She asked, amazed. The lands of sweets, the prince replied. Before them stood a huge marzipan castle, decorated with all kinds of treats.
lifting Clara from the sleigh. He set her down on the palace steps, and a fanfare of trumpets rang out. At the top, the doors opened and a fairy appeared, dressed from head to toe in pink. Clara, this is Sugar Plum Fairy," said the prince. "She rules over the lands of the sweets. I hope you have a sweet tooth," said the Sugar Plum Fairy with a smile. She led them into a grand hall. Where the tables were covered with chocolate cakes, cookies, and candy swirls. Watch the wooden chairs," whispered the prince as Clara sat down. "They are made of raspberry mousse." Clara. Ate until she thought she'd pop. After the feast, a band struck up, and dancers from around the world performed for Clara. First came the dance of chocolate, and a Spanish pair spun around to snapping castanets. Next came the exotic dance of coffee. A beautiful Arabian princess danced with smooth, swirling movements in time to soft, soothing music. The third group of dancers had come all the way from China to entertain everyone with their tea dance. Many more dances followed. Each one. Showing something good to eat or drink, but the final dance was very different. A group of ballerinas, all dressed as flowers, performed a slow waltz for Clara. Their arms unfolded gracefully, like the petals of a flower, as they waved in and out of each other. And now, I am afraid it's time for us to go home," said the prince sadly, with a sigh. Clara climbed into the sleigh and waved goodbye to the sugar plum fairy. Thank you for an amazing evening, Nutcracker Prince," said Clara with a yawn. She was so tired that she fell asleep on his shoulder. When Clara woke up, she was back under the Christmas tree, and the prince was gone. Only her door lay beside her. Oh, 
It was only a dream, she cried, but it seemed so real. Just then, Clara spotted the tag that her godfather had attached to the present. I hope it protects you, it said. I wondered if that means he knew the Nutcracker Prince would rescue me, thought Clara. Maybe it wasn't just a dream. <laughs>